And this is an RTS, I think. This one has very low sound. So I'm gonna see if I can adjust. That might be better. All right, let's start a new campaign. We're gonna be Lady. And we're gonna call ourselves the Ready Set Fighters. And you can change the sigil of your flag, the color, background, and all of that. But let's choose the difficulty. Ready Set Fighters, exactly. Yeah, let's go that route. We'll go with randoms and put ready set fighter. So it also sounds like now it's too loud. That might be on my end though. Hello, Moon Child. Welcome to the stream. Yes, I am very bouncy. I'm so bouncy. But welcome to the stream. Hope you're doing well this evening. <laughs> no, it's fine. I was like, yeah, just. I'm like, yeah, it's so small. Let's do that. Um, so we have difficulty of two. You can't change it. This is the oh yes you can. So I could go adventurer, which is recommended for those new to Iron Oath or turn-based tactical RPGs. Which we'll probably go adventurer because I'm still a little new to the uh, Iron Oath or to turn-based tactical RPGs. Also, if you like really really chill streams, you should totally go ahead and check out Moonchild. Uh, Moon plays a lot of chill games. Every time she plays a game, I end up going to buy it. Like, th this is legit my thing now. Like, I will legit go buy games that she plays because they're awesome. Um, great, great content creator. She plays uh, things from Stardew Valley to um, Rune Factory 5 is what she plays. Now, oh no, it's definitely not... <laughs> I'm like, huh, I have to have this now. Because she just makes it look so good and fun. <laughs> yes, I buy a lot of my games. Um, and she also plays indie games as well. So definitely go ahead and check her out. Um, so we got recommended for those new to the Iron Oath or turn based tactical RPGs. That's me. I'm new. A good place to start if this is your first campaign. While still a challenge, there will be more opportunities to recover from a set few setbacks. Um, start with 1,500 gold coins, fewer enemies that have less HP than other difficulties, and dungeons new time mods every 20 seconds. Okay, we're going to do Adventurer, but there are three different modes with this. But we're going to do Adventurer because I'm new to turn-based tactical RPGs. They're not my favorite, but I'm willing to step out of the box to see what's going on. Oh no. In an era all but forgotten, the gods once lived alongside humanity in the heart of Kelum. However, an unknown catalysm catalysmic event plunged the world into a dark age history was lost to time and so too were the gods in their absence a rebuilding humanity was left to contend with the emergence of a great being of darkness from the void every few decades in an event called the scourge the dragon's arrival would bring death and disease to the land those afflicted by the dragon's blight would lose their minds and bodies as they slowly became abominations of flesh and outcasts to society known as the blighted. Despite centuries of effort from the Vanguard Order and the realm's greatest heroes, no lasting victory against the dragon could be achieved. Humanity has now come to accept the inevitable of the scourge as part of life 
enduring or in some cases thriving despite it with whispers of the impending scourge circulating you and your company find yourselves in a burial crypt not far from the city of Adelon a simple retrieval of smuggled supplies or at least that's what your employer had promised And we're loading, dun, dun, dun. we're loading, dun, dun, dun. Oh, we got a tag. Thank you for that lurk. Dane grave robbers, stay sharp. No doubt his companions would have heard that. Everyone stands still, tensions rising as they grip through their weapons tight and scan the room for further hostiles. You hear a muffled shout from someone in an adjacent corridor, likely directed toward their now deceased associate. The sound of quickening footsteps soon follows and three figures burst through a doorway at the far side of the room. Crap! Should I go and alert the others? Yurik shakes his head, eyes fixed on the enemy. No time for that. We've no, we've no choice but to fight. Begin combat. I'm gonna try to stay in character with these characters. Survive, survey the battlefield by using Wazda. Um, you can also pan by holding M3, so the center mouse button, and moving the mouse, so this way and then of course was the on their turn each character can move as many hexes as their movement stat allows by moving on to a green hex they can still perform an action afterwards okay well yeah that's like how it is in D D too though as long as you're not doing a full move you can still attack sorry to cover more ground they can sprint onto the dash grade hexes but doing so will end their turn because that's a full you can swap places with an ally by moving on to their location swapping is useful for setting up attacks or for getting an ally out of harm's way by holding shift you can draw a custom movement route to undo a movement click the undo button on the hot bar or press the hot key assigned to it which is e if you take damage or trigger a stage hazard you will be unable to undo your movement let's move the storm caller into cover by clicking left mouse button on the indicated hex if you don't have a desirable action to perform you can delay a character's turn into the end of the round by hitting the wait button Alternatively, you can end a character's turn by using the guard action, which provides a temporary bonus to defense and invasion. Click the wait button to delay the storm caller's turn. Okay. Your character's abilities have a limited number of charges available, so it is important to plan wisely and use them effectively. Charges can be restored by camping or by using certain provisions. With the enemy advancing on us, we can set a trap by using the Pro Lancer, Pyro Lancer's return to sender ability on the indicated hex. Right, but that's our tank. Yeah, it looks pretty cool. <laughs> As you can see, it's important to pay attention to any potential hazards when positioning your units. Some abilities are able to push or pull targets by forcing targets into obstacles and terrain. You can inflict bonus damage and other harmful effects. Move the pillages into position and use his crescent wave ability to push the enemy into the pit. Okay. Nice.
because we're gonna flank. Every character on the battlefield exerts a zone of control on hexes adjacent to their position. A unit cannot leave the zone without suffering an attack of opportunity, of course, from their foe. This mechanic helps to lock down enemies and prevents them from reaching your move, your more va vulnerable characters. Okay. She should be able to attack, though. Each character has a basic attack, which has unlimited uses. While unique abilities are guaranteed to hit their target, basic attacks are subject to an accuracy and evasion check. Perform a basic attack on the enemy by clicking left mouse button on the indicated hex. Ow. Because I, I, most attacks and abilities are subject to a line of sight check. When targeting a red eye indicator that there's no line of sight while a ye Okay, let me slow down. When targeting a red eye indicates that there is no line of sight while a yellow eye indicates a partial line of sight. Large obstacles such as pillars can block line of sight entirely. When a character has no vision of an enemy, they are unable to directly target them. Smaller obstacles such as a barrel, crate, or character will partially obscure line of sight under the right circumstances. A target who is partially visible will receive 50% less damage from attacks. By taking cover directly behind a small obstacle, you can t look over the obstacle and gain full vision of an enemy while remaining only partially visible in return. The Stormcaller's Conduit ability can devastate a, a single enemy from range but takes a few turns to channel. You can see where a channel will finish by looking at the blue indicated arrow on the order of turn, turn order, sorry. Select the continent spell and target the enemy archer. Got you. With the nearest enemy stunned, the Pyro Lancer can safely move past their zone of control without incurring an act of the opportunity. And the attack of opportunity can also be provided by using abilities that incorporate movement or by utilizing the swap action. Let's aid the guardian and sprint to engage her target. Okay. Nice. Your pendulous has killed an enemy and gained morale, which is not good because they're supposed to be peaceful. Morale is displayed by the white bar on each character's pro t portrait. It represents their mood and attitude towards the current mission. Morale is gained and lost through various combo combat triggers. Landing a killing blow will increase morale, while suffering critical strife from the enemy will lower it. So it's kind of a little bit like Darkest Dungeon. If I remember correctly, a character with low morale will take longer to recover from a mission and will also lose loyalty towards the company. Ooh, okay. Targets are considered flanked, right? We flank them. Whenever you occupy two opposing hexes around our locations, all the targets, all attacks against flank targets deal extra damage. Okay, so this plays like D and D a bit. It cannot miss. Let's move the guardian to a flanking position and attack the enemy. Cause that's what I was gonna say, like. So now they're flanked. So now our hit should do more damage. Nice. Let's loot that. Eurix sheaths his weapon, gazing around the room to make sure our all are unharmed. Everyone all right then. Wolfram gestures at some blood on Eurix's arm. Never mind us. You've certainly looked better. Eurix glances down at his injury and scoffs. What's this? He wipes at the blood, making a smeary mess of it. Nothing time won't heal. 
I'll be fine. You turn as a familiar voice rings out distantly behind you. Though the words are unclear, is that you, Van? Van dashes into the room and stops kneeling over to catch his breath. He looks up with a revealed, relieved smile. Glad to see you're all still with us. We heard the fighting, figured you could handle it, but I didn't want to take that chance. And the others? Van points back in the direction he came from. Torin and the rest are still searching. Surely he, there are better places to stash supplies, but I suppose those smugglers had little choice. At least we're getting paid well to retrieve them. We've been in more, we've been in worse situations. I, that we have, boss. We just hoping my last job would be free of surprises. I can't fault you for wanting out, but I wish you'd reconsider. Van smiles faintly and places a firm hand on Yurik's shoulder. This life takes a toll, my friend. I've seen more death than any man should. His face goes dark for a brief moment, remembering all the times you've lost. All the friends you've lost, sorry. Your trusted advisor, Alaric, steps out from beside you with hands raised, bringing a halt to conversation. All right now. There's plenty of time for talk later. It's going to take a while to score this place, even though, even with the others' help. Right. I'd better get back to Torin and the rest before they find themselves lost. Watch your backs. There may be more of these thieves in here, or worse yet. Vaughn looks back over his shoulder, nodding in acknowledgement. Let's get moving. Most actions you take while exploring a dungeon will cost time. The passage of time can have harsh consequences and is represented by the time meter in the bottom right. We should begin exploring using left mouse button to move our party to an adjacent tile. Okay. So far, I'm, I'm really, like, digging this. Scouting can be useful in order to spot enemies. Do we have a scout? Traps and other surprises that may await you. By scouting an enemy's location, you prevent them from being able to ambush you. It does cost extra time, however, so it should be used sparingly. Click right mouse button over a tile, a tile to scout in that direction. When interacting with an exploration event, you often have multiple choices available to you. Sometimes costing various amounts of time, your characters will have their own opinion on the choices you make, which can affect their overall, overall loyalty to the company. Some actions require a stat check, and the character with the highest relevant attribute will be chosen for the task. The character in question will give you feedback to help you ga gauge their chance of success. If you have any tools with you, they can be consumed to boost the chances of a success action. Okay. Or to perform a unique action that otherwise wouldn't be available to you. You spot a discarded pack up ahead, likely dropped in haste by the grave robbers when you alerted them. Don't expect to find much of value, but it's not like they'll be coming back to claim it. No sense in leaving it for another to find. Take whatever looks useful. We loot it. Takes one time. It might belong to someone else. We should leave it be. I'm gonna loot. I'm sorry, I'm gonna loot it. Well, yeah, we knew the the monk wasn't gonna like it, but... I'm pretty sure that's the monk who didn't like it. Receive the small health potion, bandages, and tools. Provisions can be used both in and out of combat. While exploring, you can access your provision inventory in the bottom left menu or by pressing I. Like other actions, provisions used during exploration have their own associated time cost. My pyrolancer, Yurik, is hurting a bit after the last encounter. We should use the potion to restore his health. Okay. So go here. This is Yurik. The monk didn't like what we did. She did, because she's a barbarian. Um, but we need to give him a potion. Okay. Uh, 
Um, how do I get out of this? Okay. Battle. Dun 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 the battle. During the deployment phase, you are able to reposition your party ahead of combat. Click the left mouse button on any character to move them and click again on any valid hex to confirm their new position. Once you're satisfied with their formation, click the start combat button. Okay, well... I kind of want to put you here. Let's move you here. Put you there. I'm good. I'm not gonna move. I want them to come to me. I don't want to go to them, so let us wait it out. See if we can. There we go. Okay, for you, my friend, can I move you here? Oh, I didn't know that was gonna hit her. Now I know, though. Cleansing conditions. You can dispel negative conditions from your character with cleansing items. Or by using an antidote item. Not all harmful effects can be cleansed, however. Such as injuries or the flank debuffed. Okay. Oh, man. Let's put that there. I could move here that would allow for me to attack that one and ideally they shouldn't be able to nice we're gonna kill this guy here some enemies have passive abilities these undead skeletons are able to reanimate after being defeated. To prevent them from it, you need to target and destroy the pile of bones. Got you. Okay. Well, we're about to kill this one. Guard now. I knew that was gonna happen. Cause now it's flanked. Oh, that's not a good idea. Destroy that. She needs to heal too. Kill that guard nailed it. And then she'll just kill the bones. Nice. That one was a little out there because I had misread one of the abilities, but now I know how the ability works, so 
You know, it's, you know, hit and miss with these loot that. Okay. You signal a halt as a faint and distant rumbling becomes audible, steadying, steadily growing louder and closer with each passing moment. You look up, noticing cracks forming in the ceiling as small rocks break off a boulder. Oh, and fall to the floor around you. Yuri bumps against you and tugs at your arm, urging you to run. It's a cave-in! We need to move! Breaking into stride behind the rest of your party, you steal a glance between back to see the corridor collapsing in a cascade of falling stone. You cross the threshold in another chamber, diving to the ground as the path behind it gets boot. It's quickly closed off by the crumbling structure. A cloud of dirt and dust obscures your vision, but the rumbling and crashing comes to a halt as the last few pieces of debris can be heard trembling in position. Everyone okay? You look around as the dust settles. Aside from a few coughing fits, everyone seems to be unscathed. <sighs> what the heck was that? An earthquake? Might have been. Or those grave robbers tried to force their way into some place they shouldn't. Yurik inspects the cave in passage, lightly kicking at some rubble on the ground. Regardless, we'll have to find another way out. What of the others and the supplies we're supposed to locate? Yurik places a reassuring hand on Wilfram's shoulder. Vaughn and them were on the other side of that crypt. I suspect they're fine, or at least I hope. My priority is to find them. Hopefully, they have already retrieved the supplies. We could do with a little luck. So then continue. Um, I am going to scout this one and see. I think I don't think we can go that way because of the cave in. So can we scout this? Misplaced provisions. You're not sure when or how it happened, but you seem to have misplaced a few items. Oh, we lost our healing potion. Crud. That sucks. Okay. Continue. As you explore, the applications of various time modifiers will present new challenges for you to overcome. With each time modifier applied, your party will slowly become unnerved and suffer a small loss to morale. Due to these factors, it's important to be efficient and spend your time wisely. You can see which modifiers are currently active next to the time meter in the bottom right. Okay. Your path is blocked by a pile of rubble from the recent cave-in. Your steps toward and climbs the top to gauge the severity of the blockage. Ah, it's not so bad. I can see a clear path ahead. Just need to move around enough of this rubble so we can squeeze through. He turns looking down to address you. Any ideas? Move the rubble by hand, takes four. Blast the hole with magic. This could prove, yeah, because that could make the, the cave in worse. So we're not going to do that one. And your rake of shovel takes two. Uh, let's do the shovel. With an affirming nod, Yuri grabs the shovel and begins to dig, soon clearing a path just wide enough for everyone to fit through. You'll probably cross through the gap in the rubble. It comes out the other side, sliding down the pile and back onto solid ground. You see the flickering light of a torch being cast into the open room, or into the room from a connecting hall, emulating more of your surrounding as it nears. Your party forms up, prepared for combat as the flames bear rounds the corner. Easy now, it's just me. I thought this whole dang place was going to come down on top of us. The structure grounds and rumbles for a moment, and he glances around with some concern. It might yet. Yurik motions back to the co towards the collapse. That whole section is caved in. 
We'll need to find a new way out of here once we're done. I figured as much. Doran and the others are already set to finding one. I take it you haven't found the supplies yet? Yuri slowly shakes his head. Unfortunately, not. Let's hope they're not buried in stone. Regroup with Torn and secure an exit, Vaughn. We'll find you when the job is done. Sure thing, boss. He quickly scans your surroundings and leans in close, his expression turning dead serious. There's something else. All that commotion has disturbed the dead within these walls. We've already put down a few of the bastards, but you best stay alert for more. Thanks for the warning. We'll tread carefully. Okay. Battle. Okay, well, we don't want y'all all grouped together. So, I am going to stick... Because you're a magic user, so let's stick you here. Yep, I want you two to swap. Because I need somebody to be up there with him to protect. Let's go here and guard. Guard. Miss. Because we can flank them. No, I don't want to do that. Got him. Guard. Push them out of the way. Um, go here. Basic attack. We'll have him cast that. Wait, what does this do? Dash to an empty cell, strike an enemy twice. Because I can have her flank. I figured that was going to happen. Guard. There we go. And then you'll kill it. Nice. Oh, okay, I see. I was like, what is going on? We got our potion back. That's good. Where are we at? 940. Yurik runs their hands along a wall of interred dead, reading the inscriptions on each nameplate before moving on to the next. He stops at one, peering closer and double-checking the name before turning with relief in his voice. This is the one we were told to look for, boss. 
about time. Let's hope that the contents are still intact. Reaching with both arms into the dark recess, Yurik firmly grabs hold of a coffin. It's ancient and rotting wood creaking in protest. He gingerly slides the coffin apart and pushes the lid aside, rummaging around briefly before pulling out the stash pad with care. Yeah, I'm probably getting ready to uh, take my next break because my knee's starting to bother me again. So I'm probably getting ready to um, call this one here. I'm going to see if I can save it, though, because I did make pretty good progress. Um, rummaging around. Okay, be briefly before pulling out the stash pack with the care. Taking a peek inside to confirm the contents, he walks over to you and hands off the bag. It's all here, all there. No damage to the vials, from what I can tell. What does our employer want with them, anyway? Ulrich interjects, eager to share his knowledge on the matter. This here is a cure for the blight, or at least it shows the process. The Vanguard keeps it tightly controlled throughout, only treating those who pledge themselves to the order. As such, it's highly sought after on the black market, and why our employers paying us so well? At least our efforts haven't been wasted. Let's regroup with Van and hope that they found us on the ex an exit. Let's camp. I know what camping is, so don't need to really. Let's see what this is. You hear a sudden movement in the darkness ahead. The sound of bones rattling and scraping along the stone floor. Bright green eyes turn. Okay, so this is the big, big bat. And the undead being leaks out a bone chilling screech as it shuffles towards you. Yep, so this is the big bat. So we'll do this and then we will take our next break. Nice. I think his initiative is better though. Dang. Cause she was scared. did half damage though that's not too bad <gasps> no that's not what I wanted you to do crud he might get murked though Yeah, that was a bad idea. Falling rocks. I gotta move him if I can. Guard, I 
I have to move him. Let's have our guard. Nice. Come around here. That should be the end of the fight. And this is when a character gains enough experience they will level up and receive attribute points and ability points okay there's six right okay that's pretty self-explanatory is our monk let's do a physique for you How many points? Oh, and finesse. Okay, so go here. We'll do acrobatics. And potency. Okay, you are, are. So I need you to have insight and mind. We're gonna do range and potency for you as well. Fern, you're a healer. Do conviction and insight. Okay, let's do that and then do Radiant Dial. Confirm. We're going to grab this. Injury prone. One misstep or lapse in judgment is all it takes to get seriously hurt around here. One can only concentrate on so many. Okay. Let me see if I can. We used all of those. All right, let me see if I can save. All right, we're gonna save and then quit to the main menu because my knee is really screaming at me now. So I do need to take another break. Um, we're going to take a little bit of a longer break this time, too. Um, but that is the Iron Oaf. Um, it is currently in early access, and I did mean to mention that before I started. Um, it is an early access game, which means that the following live stream footage of the Iron Oaf is an early access version of the game. Therefore, the footage you have just seen may or may not be featured in the final version of the game. Also, there may be some noticeable bugs in the game. Um, this one is going for 1999 USD and is available on GOG, Steam, and Humble Bundle. Um, so you can pick it up from any of those sites. If you do want to pick it up, if you click on the link here that I have just provided, it takes you to a Google Doc. And on that Google Doc, it gives you all of the platforms in which the game is available on and the price of the game. 
Um, overall, I really like the game. It reminds me of D&D a lot, and I probably will continue to play this more. It's like... You know, because I've been looking for a game to play since I stopped playing D&D. So, this would definitely fill that void that I've been having. So, I will probably play more of this offline. Because uh, it's a lot of reading. But overall, the Eye are off. And as always, as I like to go ahead and remind you all that even if you cannot purchase the game, please go ahead and wishlist the game. Wishlisting the game does help the developers of the game out a lot. It can help them end up on the front page of Steam as well as in the new and trendworthy section. So when in doubt, please, please wishlist it out. And again, a very big thank you to Humble Games for providing me with a free copy of the game to play on tonight's stream. <laughs> 